Hi, this is Michael from Expanse VR, and in this shader graph tutorial, we are going to be looking at some new nodes, including the time node, plus completing the challenges from the last episode. Now, first off, I do want to apologize. This one has been a long time in the coming, but I got excited about a few of the other tutorials I had to get out and also life just got a little bit busy but now we're back into the shader graph ones so we're gonna kick things straight off and if you're new to the channel don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and of course kick that notification button down below to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new tutorial for you so in the last episode I gave you the two challenges the first one being that when Sorry, just getting a bit closer in there so we can see. So when we change the health on our shader, that it doesn't affect the whole image. It should be just affecting the health and not our border. So that was our first challenge. The second challenge was to also add another group for all our alpha nodes. So at the moment, if we look at the alpha channel, it is covering everything that has been done in this section here what we want to do is only affect the internal part and from us working in here we have already worked out the inner rectangle and our outer rectangle so what we can do is add the outer rectangle data that we have here to what we have here so if we do add and actually let's shift all these out the way to give us a bit more room. And what we can do is add the output from the calculation we've done there for the inner health bar. Bring this down here from the border that we have calculated and put that into our alpha. And if we save it, now it's kind of going to work but you can see that we're getting some funky colors going on here. And the reason being is that, as I said before, we always are trying to work in just zero to one. And what is happening here is that when we are at zero, the color is correct because we've got our one to our alpha on these colors here. But when we come to here and make it all 100%, this is making our square zero. So actually what we do, this will make more sense if we do it this way. Let's get our preview node out. And just for demonstration purposes, so as we are decreasing this here, The value that's coming out of this node here, the step node, is a one across our whole UV map. But the problem is now that we're actually adding on top of that. So in the center is one, which is why it's displaying green on here. But on the outside, it is a two value. And once we go past that zero to one value, it can cause some weird things to happen sometimes. Like here, where you're seeing the colors being distorted for it. So if we just control Z and go back to where we were. So what we need to do is add something in to stop it going from past the zero to one boundary that we want to keep to. And quite simply, what we need to use is a, uh, not a step, clamp. Now, if you've done a bit of C sharp programming, one second, I've got it in the wrong spot there. If you've done a bit of C-sharp programming, you would be used to the clamp function in C-sharp. And how this clamp works is that you have an input. So in this case, it's gonna be our alpha channel. And it's gonna clamp it between the two values here, the minimum and the maximum. In this case, it's zero and one. And that will stop the issue that we have of that section of the UV becoming values of two or one to two. So if we save the asset, you will see that now we have our border and it's not being affected as we change the health, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So you could have got most of the way there from the challenge, but obviously without knowing about the clamp tool, you would have seen that error coming up. 
And the second part of the challenge was simply to turn this into another group. So we're gonna make this our alpha group. So we'll bring it down here and make sure to right click outside of the actual nodes themselves and group selection. And this one we're gonna call alpha channel. So as it is, this is a perfectly functional health bar and you could use this quite easily for whatever you need to do, but it can have a little bit more added to it. And as we get further on and working towards the one that you saw at the beginning of the series, the health globes, we are now gonna look at some of the other functions that's gonna help with that. So what we're gonna do next is add in something so that we can modify the color of our health bar as we take damage. So not only will have it that it will decrease here visibly, but we'll change the color and it can be done very easily with a new node called the lerp node. So we're just gonna make a little bit of room here and we'll add in our lerp node by right clicking, typing in lerp and we'll just place it in the middle here because we're gonna be using information from both of these for the moment. So the lerp node has three inputs and the first input we're gonna use is one of our colors that we had before and then we're gonna use a second color in this instance, this will be red because this one's actually green for the moment. And how it works is, is that this T input here, the third one, it takes in a value and normally we use a value between zero and one. And if you've done C sharp and you've used a lerp function in there, you know that a lerp function works by basically blending between the two values. So the first value will be uh, zero, the second value will be one. And as we move a value in between that, so say 0 0.5, it will give us an amount in between. And to give an example, which is easy when we do a visual, we'll just use a vector one node. So at the moment it is zero. Uh, actually, this might not work. Actually, let's change this to a different color to make it easy to see. So for the moment we do yellow. So because it's on zero, it's fully red. And as we go closer to one, it's gonna blend. So halfway between, uh, so 0 0.5 is gonna give you that sort of orangey color because that's a blend between yellow and red. And then as we get all the way to one, it gives us our second value, which is our yellow. I wanna make it easier again. Let's pick a more obvious color. So we're on one, as we come back, we're into purple, all the way down to zero. So for us, we're gonna change this back to red. And instead of using this vector one here, we're actually gonna use the value that we've already got that's from zero to one, which is our health down here. And because we've used this multiply node already on our health, we've already got a value of zero to one that we can use. So we're simply gonna pull this up from here and into here. And as you can see from here, and I think we've already demonstrated this before, but you can have one node that outputs to more than one other node. So in this case, we've got our multiply going to two different nodes here, and up here we've got our first input color going to two different nodes here. So when we save this, As you can see, it's starting off green and it's not going down to red. Why is it not going down to red? I did save it, didn't I? Save again. Ah, oh, it would help if I actually <laughs> output our result over here. So now if we save it, there we go. Except for I've got this back to front. So what we want to do here is switch this over to this one and this one to here. There we go. And now if we save, there we go. Green to red. Now the only small problem we have is that you can see that it's also affecting our 
border. And that's because we've taken away our multiply one here. So what we actually need to do is bring this color over here and multiply over here and actually pull this into this point here. And now if we save, we are no longer affecting our border. And we have a health bar that now changes color depending on how much damage that we have taken. And just before going any further, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So both the slurp and color probably belong in our color section here, our color group. Um, but I'm also going to turn this color here into a second property. And we'll call this one internal color two. Actually, that should have a underscore in front. And we'll rename this to internal color one. Just leave that for the moment. And we'll save that there. And with these ones here, I'm just gonna minimize this because we don't need it to be there. Drag it into the group and drag this one into the group as well. So it's that little bit neater. And you'll see that there are still some lines going in between the two groups. Um, we can't avoid that, but this is a lot more organized now. Now, the last part for this video, what I'm gonna do is show you how we can add a texture to this, which we have actually already done before. So I'm gonna go through that part fairly quickly, but we're gonna add a little bit of animation to it. Now we are going to need a texture for this, a black and white texture. And I was looking for something kind of smoke-like. And with a quick Google, I found this one here on filterforge.com. Um, you can use whichever one you want, just it's very important that it is tileable. So I have it in here and I'm just gonna drag it into the scene. So what we're going to do first is just apply this to our central color, the internal color um, representing our health. And if you remember before, all we need to do is you can either add it or multiply it. In this case, we're going to multiply the amount once again. So this one here, our output here and bring it into the center. And if we save, you can see what that's starting to look like now. And it's starting to give us a little bit of a look, but you can see that it's kind of stretched out. So the next thing that we need to do is add a, a tiling and offset node, which allows us to make changes to our texture. And for this one, what we're gonna do, because the bar is kind of about a three to one ratio, we just, change the tiling amount to 3nx and save and you can now see that it looks kind of right in our screen there. Now the tiling and offset node is a really important one when working with textures but you can actually use it for many other features and we will be using it extensively in some of the other videos coming up but for the moment we're just going to use it for two small things the first one we've already done which is just to get it so it looks correct and with the space that we're using but more importantly is for the next part which is the animation and we're going to use it along with the time node to actually give it some animation. Now we can, we can plug this in directly into here and you'll actually already start seeing some animation going on, but you can see it's going in both the X and Y axes. And so what we need to do is add a vector two node to help split this up for us. So plugging in again into our offset. Now we can choose which one we want to put it into. And we're going to put the time node into the Y axis to allow it to scroll from top to bottom. As you can see, it's going probably a little bit faster than I would like. So what we can do is use a multiply node just to slow it down. So bring it in, times it by 0.1. 
and now it's nice and slow. And if we save it, you'll see that it's kind of going in the scene, but not really because we actually need to push play to see it in full effect. So there we go, we can see it scrolling through nicely now and just gives it a little bit of a different effect. And just before we finish off on this video, I'm just gonna explain a little bit more about the time node. Now you can see there are different uh, outputs here. At the moment we're using time, which if we go to our documentation. So as you can see here, we have a couple of different times that we can use. And the most important ones that we will be using um, is obviously the time. But more importantly, just like if you are doing something in C Sharp, it's, more, it's actually better to be using delta time as that is a time rate per frame. So that will actually give you a more consistent look over different systems. The other one that we use quite a bit will be the sine and the cosine. So coming back to this one, instead of using the time, we'll actually use the delta time and we'll just get rid of that stupid precision. And the way that the sine and cosine work, if we were to use that instead is, and we'll just ramp up the speed so you can see it, is sine and cosine will actually give us a value of zero to one over time and then back again. So if we actually use that one, you're gonna see that it's gonna go up, it's gonna stop and then come back down again and then go back up. And you can actually see in our preview here that it's going from black to white and back again. And that's what the sine and time, uh, sine and cosine do. Uh, they just do it at opposite spectrums and they will become quite useful in other uh, shaders that we do later on. But again, we'll just go back to our Delta time one here. So that is it for this video. I'm going to give you two challenges this time with this video. One is going to be that when we push play, you can see that it is actually scrolling down. Um, I would actually prefer it to be scrolling up. Uh, again, it's just a personal preference, but your one of your challenges is going to be to reverse how that is working. Again, you have used all the nodes up until this point that will make this work. It's just working a, the logic behind getting it to work in the way that you want to. And the second one is that at the moment, you can see with the color here, how we've got green to black. I would actually prefer it that we don't have black there. I'd actually think it'd look nicer if this cloudy look was actually between two colors. And that is gonna be your second challenge to have it not being from the color that we've chosen to the to black. It's gonna be between two different colors. And to give you a little bit of a tip, we've used the node in this tutorial that you will be wanting to use to make that work. So again, give it a try. Even if you've been going through all the videos or if you've come across this one and I've got other videos in front of this, make sure before pressing play on that very next video, give it a try yourself. The best way to learn, I always say, is to fail. So give it a go. If you get it right, great. If you get it right in a different way to I do it, you'll learn something different. And if you fail, or at least you'll have a better understanding of what isn't working for you than just simply following along. So thanks again for joining us and I'll promise to have the next shader graph one up a lot quicker than this last one. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share to help grow our beautiful Unity community. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button below to make sure you get to see our next video. See you shortly.